finally we're going to be getting some actually good graphics cards. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so Intel just released their new GPUs. We got Nvidia releasing their new RTX 50 series cards in January if leaks are to be believed, specifically hopefully at CES. But then now we got some information about AMD's RDNA 4 GPUs and they're looking really impressive. So let's take a look. This first bit of information actually comes from videocards.com and they were able to actually spot in what appears to be a software update to something called RockM, which is an open source AMD software solution. Who cares? Let's talk about the graphics cards that were spotted. Taking a look here, we can see the RX 8600 and the 8800. So it's official. These two cards should be coming out very, very soon. In fact, I'll just cut to the chase. It's sounding like CES 2025 is a very likely time for us to be seeing these new GPUs. And if that is the case, we can expect to see probably at least two new GPUs, if not three, as well as potentially some others being teased as well. And that should be the RX 8800 XT, the RX 8700 XT, I believe, and then the RX 8600 XT. So that's three new GPUs that I do expect to see at CES in 2025. But now let's talk about some more information that was just spilled about the performance and potential specs of these cards. Now this next bit of information actually comes from WCCF Tech, who spotted over on Chip Hell the user, I'm not going to attempt to say that, who stated that, quote, AIB officially started mass production in mid-December. Although it's ready for mass production, there are still some minor bugs. Power consumption compared to the 7900 XTX is minus 25%. And then, get this, he states that in a game, apparently ray tracing is 45% better than the RX 7900 XTX, which is significantly better than what I was expecting out of these cards. I mean, we knew ray tracing was gonna be better, but for it to dethrone the 7900 XTX by such an enormous margin, well, this will make this card actually pretty competitive versus the RTX 50 series, at least when it comes to ray tracing. Oh, and I did also wanna mention that in terms of ray tracing performance to expand on that, well, the RX 7900 XTX actually has 50% more cores. So effectively, in terms of ray tracing, what we're talking about, if the leak about the RX 8800 XT is true, and it is 45% faster in terms of ray tracing versus the 7900 XTX. Well, that means that RDNA 4 is actually bringing, get this around 2.2 times faster ray tracing performance per core. And that is absolutely insane. But there's more information as he also goes on to state that other mainstream games were also tested. Ray tracing is indeed an epic improvement and it should be around the 4080 and the 4080 Super. And in fact, videocards.com even put out some specs on the RX 8800 XT, the RX 8700 XT, and then apparently the RX 8600 XT as well. And to gamers delight these more affordable GPUs, as yes, I am expecting them to come in at a pretty affordable and enticing price for gamers will come with 16 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, and then for the lower end card, 12 gigabytes, which I do think is perfectly acceptable as long as the price is right. And again, I think it will be. In fact, let's talk about all the specs, price, and performance of these GPUs based on everything that I've seen thus far. Let's go ahead and start off with the entry-level GPU, the RX 8600 XT. Now, I do believe this should come in with 32 compute units or 2,048 shaders, should have a boost clock potentially between 3 and 3.2 gigahertz, and then it should have 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 running at 20 gigabits per second, although it could be a bit lower, such as 19 on a 192-bit bus for 456 gigabytes per second, a massive improvement over what I believe was closer to 288 on previous generation cards that were in a similar 
type of price category. So this will definitely be a massive improvement for those of you out there looking for a more entry-level 1440B card at a far more affordable price. And the TDP is likely to be around 175 watts. Next up, we have the 8700 XT. This should be 56 compute units or 3,584 shaders, three gigahertz clock speed, 16 gigabytes of G6 running at 20 gigabits per second on a 256-bit bus for 640 gigabytes per second of total memory bandwidth and a TDP likely around 225 watts. And then finally, the 8800 XT, 64 compute units, the full die or 4,096 shaders, three gigahertz clock speed, 16 gigabytes of G6. Once again, 20 gigabits per second, 256 bit bus. Although I do want to mention that video card seems to believe the 8700X will actually be 18 gigabits per second. So there's a possibility it will be cut down in terms of memory bandwidth on that card. But in any case, yes, back to the 8800XT. This means 640 gigabytes per second and a TDP of 265 watts. And that does at this point in time seem very likely to be true based on a lot of various different things that we've seen and heard. But now let's talk about the actual performance and the release date. Starting off with the 8600 XT, this should come in somewhere between likely 270 to $300, should get you around 75% of a 7800 XT and have a release date of quarter one of 2025. Then we have the 8700 XT likely coming in at a price of 350 to $400, should be around 16% faster than the 7800 XT and be released at CES quarter one 2025. And then finally, the 8800 XT should be around 450 to $500, should have around 32% higher performance than the 7800 XT, or just a little bit faster than the RX 7900 XT. Although again, it should be crushing it in terms of ray tracing, and once again, be releasing CES quarter one, 2025. Now, personally, I would love to see the 8800 XT come in at $450. I think AMD can do it. And if they can pull that off, it'll definitely be a very good value card. We'll be talking about over 30% more performance and a reduction in price versus the 7800 XT. And that is going to be something that'll put some serious pain on NVIDIA. However, if they do choose to go for $500, I think that's definitely still acceptable and that would still be a pretty good price, but it wouldn't be as amazing as $450. So I do really hope they go for $270, $350, and $450, but we'll just have to wait and see if that does end up happening at CES in 2025. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that AMD really will come out with such aggressive pricing and pretty good performance increases as well? Or do you think they're gonna try and jack the prices up? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.